Welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews in partnership with Braid Runner Sports, and today we're taking a look at one of the most stable running and walking shoes around. It's the Brooks Beast GTS 23. Let's run with it. And before we get started, I do want to say that these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, no one had a chance to preview this video. This file synopsis is my own. I'd also like to say, please leave a like on the video and consider subscribing. Here we go. If you're not familiar with Brooks running shoes for all their stability options, they'll add the term GTS to the end of the name. So Beast GTS. Now GTS stands for go to support, indicating that it's a stability running shoe. This is a unique example as the Beast is technically a motion control running shoe, which means it's a stability running shoe on steroids to prevent any excess motion whatsoever. As the name implies, it's really rigid, rather firm, and gives you one of the most stable experiences in the running shoe game. And in my opinion, I think this is one of the most stable Brooks running shoes as well, compared to things like the Glycerin GTS or the Adrenaline GTS, which I think are the more popular stability shoes. So GTS stands for go-to sport, indicates a stability shoe. And in the case of the Beast, it's a rather unique instance as this is a motion control running shoe, which just means it's a super stable stability running shoe, if that makes sense. So who is the Brooks Beast for? Well, it's for any runner or walker that needs the most amount of support and guidance possible in a shoe. And I think the Brooks Beast is probably one of the most popular motion control shoes around. And we also don't see too many motion control shoes anymore as well. I think the stability running shoe space has had a lot of evolution lately, and we're seeing some more creative solutions to stability compared to the very traditional, rather firm, incredibly stiff option or basically setup like we see here with the Brooks Beast. The Brooks Beast GTS 23 costs $160 and weighs a whopping 11.6 ounces, which is on the heavier side of things. As far as stack height goes, we have 26 in the heel, 14 in the forefoot for that classic Brooks 12 millimeter heel to toe drop. Moving on to the upper, we have a very classic traditional engineered mesh. The breathability was average, felt very much like a Brooks upper, if you will. I thought it was true size and the lockdown was spot on. My only minor complaint was I wish the toe box was a little bit wider toward the top. I had a little bit of rubbing on my big toe. Other than that, you have a very strict heel counter with tons of padding in the ankle and Achilles area. And the tongue here, I think, is one of the most plush tongues I've ever used on Brooks' more recent running shoes. It is partially gusseted with a strip of fabric on the medial side to keep it in place. Overall, it feels very much like a Brooks upper, like I mentioned before, and I think it gets the job done. It's nothing too fancy, and I think it's just quite comfortable. The Beast 23 does have a trick up its sleeve. It has a unique insert. It's not the typical foam we see from most other Brooks running shoes. Instead, it's this rather dense, gummy-like material, which gives you a softer, slightly squishier and bouncier feeling underfoot. And I will say it does give you a moderate amount of arch support compared to, again, most other conventional inserts. Found it to be quite comfortable and again gives you that added level of comfort with this rather heavy shoe. Because this is a GTS or go to support running shoe, we have to talk about the guide rails, which are walls of foam on the beat lateral and medial side, which are designed to kind of keep you going the correct direction. So if you tend to roll inwards, you'll hit that medial guide rail and it'll kind of push you back into the correct motion. And the same thing goes with the lateral guide rail. If you tend to roll outwards, you'll hit that and it'll kind of guide you back into a more correct manner, at least according to Brooks. And I will say this goes for most other guide rails on Brooks shoes. The medial guide rail is going to be more substantial compared to the lateral guide rail. The midsole foam does get a drastic upgrade. It's a completely different compound. It's called DNA Loft V3. It's nitrogen infused. It's a similar kind of foam that we see on the glycerin. This is going to be a bit more durable compared to the conventional EVA foams or DNA Loft V2 we see from some other Brooks running shoes like the Adrenaline GTS. Now, while this is DNA Loft V3, the same kind of foam we see on the glycerin, it feels nothing like it. It's going to be substantially more firm. So I think the reason they call it DNA Loft V3 is just because it's their nitrogen infused foam, but there's it appears to be different levels to it because again, when you just put this shoe on or just do the classic thumb test, you'll notice this nitrogen infused foam is substantially firmer compared to the nitrogen infused foam we see on the glycerin and the glycerin GTS. So how does the Brooks Beast feel underfoot while walking and running? Well, as you can probably guess, it is incredibly firm. And on top of that, it is rather rigid too. This thing does not want to bend or twist. And it makes sense. This is a motion control running shoe. Its goal is to give you the most amount of support possible. And because the midsole doesn't have a whole lot of compression to it, 
it means there's less of a chance for your foot to kind of roll inwards or outwards because you have that firmer, stable base. I realize it kind of looks all soft and pillowy and friendly like we see with the glycerin, but it is not. It is very firm and it is significantly firmer compared to the DNA Loft V2 like we see on the Adrenaline GTS. So this is probably one of the firmest Brooks running shoes I have used in a while. Typically, I don't use motion control running shoes, so I was actually quite interested to give this one a shot. But I will say it absolutely accomplishes its goal of being a motion control option, and I felt incredibly supported while using this. I'll also say because the midsole is so stiff and firm, I was able to notice the rocker geometry a bit more compared to the Adrenaline GTS. The outsole almost looks like a trail shoe just because of how thick the rubber coverage is. I haven't seen an outsole with this much thick rubber in some time. It kind of blows away the Ghost and the Adrenaline GTS. You also have rubber through the midfoot and some rubber in between the forefoot flex grooves to help stiffen things up and give you even more guidance and support. I do predict this should last quite a while just because this shoe is kind of more focused on durability and guidance rather than lightness and speed. So overall, I think the Brooks Beast is a little bit too firm and heavy for my personal running style, but I do think it plays an important role in the broader shoe lineup. So let me explain. A lot of the popular stability running shoes are becoming thicker, softer, and bouncier. And while I personally like that direction, I realize that doesn't appeal to everyone. So if you're somebody who wants a more traditional stability or motion control shoe, that is where the Beast comes in. You really do have that inherently stable base with its firmer midsole and then guide rails on both sides, which aren't intrusive. So you really only notice them if you happen to kind of go off course, if you kind of pronate or supinate, that is when those guide rails kind of come into action. Otherwise, they kind of fade off into the background. The other thing I'll say is, I think if someone who's a walker or just wants to buy one pair of shoes for a while, this shoe is quite durable. The DNA Loft V3 foam with its nitrogen-infused manufacturing method has a better longevity record compared to the EVA foams we see on previous versions of the Ghost. And like I talked about before, you just have an insane amount of outsole rubber coverage here. It's just incredibly thick. And then in classic Brooks fashion, the upper, very comfortable, does a great job of giving you a nice level of comfort with tons of padding in the ankle and Achilles area, and probably one of the thickest Brooks tongues I've seen in some time. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think of motion control shoes in general? And what do you think of the Beast 23? I would love to hear from you. Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.